This introductory tutorial is going to show you how to program your first 2D spin echo sequence. We are making use of the Open MATLAB environment, which ships with our control unit Drive L. With this environment, writing your own sequence is as easy as never before. Once you have set up the control unit and the magnet, you are ready to start with the sequence code. In the next few minutes, we are going to step through all necessary parts of the code and have a closer look at how to prepare pulses, gradients and acquisition windows. The first step in every sequence is to initialize the system and to find the LAMA frequency of the sample. Our Open MATLAB environment provides helpful scripts and functions which will perform these tasks for you. Just use the load system and find frequency sweep commands to initialize the system. The next step is to define the imaging parameters such as matrix size, echo time, bandwidth, repetition time and averages. With these two parameters here we define the gradient axes for read and phase encoding. Now we can set the gradient amplitudes and the ramp times. Last but not least we define the durations of the 90 degree and 180 degree pulses. In the next step, the program takes our defined values and transforms them into structures which can be passed to the control unit. These structures are SEQ for the general sequence, TX for RF pulses and AQ for acquisition windows. You'll find that the parameters of these structures all depend on the values set in the section above, so no changes have to be made later when adjusting for example the echo time or matrix size. The structure of the gradient waveforms is a little more involved. It contains two members, time and amp. The member time defines all timestamps of the waveform and the member amp the corresponding waveform amplitudes. Once the structure is fully initialized, we can use this information to plot a diagram of the gradient waveforms. An index running from 1 to 3 numbers the gradient axes. In our example only the read and phase encoding axes are used. The slice selection is omitted by simply not passing any value to this index. To show you how to make your sequence robust against incoherent imaging parameters, we have implemented a quick check. This check warns you if your read gradient starts before the end of the 180 degree pulse. If you like, you can add additional checks for timing problems, incorrect gradient moments or any other aspect of sequence design. Now that the system is ready and all structures are initialized, let's have a closer look at the timing of the sequence. We wrote several short scripts which take the structures and plot their waveforms to a window. Here's one example. The first axis shows the RF pulses in blue and the acquisition window in red. Note that the 180 degree pulse is twice as long as the 90 degree pulse. Furthermore, the center of the 180 degree pulse is exactly halfway between the center of the 90 degree pulse and the center of the acquisition window. The second axis displays the phase encoding gradients for all different case space lines. The gradients vary from maximum positive moment to maximum negative moment. The last axis shows the read gradients with first a dephasing gradient and then a rephasing one. Note that the plateau exactly lines up with the acquisition window. Now let's go back to our code and run the sequence. The command set sequence passes all initialized structures to the control unit and starts the measurement. After all case space lines have been acquired we receive multiple data structures. For this tutorial, we are just interested in the structure data. From this we can perform a 2D fast Fourier transform to find our image. Here's one sample image of a bean which was acquired with the code from this tutorial. If you like, you can download the code from our webpage and use it as basis for your own sequences.